Hi everyone, so welcome to one more uh, Fantastic 5 MCQs for NEAT PG FMG. Let us start with the first MCQ. Bone forming drug among the following is. So the options are bisphosphonate, eriperatide, cacetonin, raloxifen. So the answer for this question is teriperatide. So teriperatide is a derivative of parathormone. It's a recombinant parathormone but with the lesser units and uh, it is given pulsatile so when you give pulsatile it stimulates osteoblast it stimulates osteoblast and thereby it causes bone forming action that is called anabolic action bone forming but the drug should be used only in case of severe osteoporosis and one of the problem with the drug if you use it for more than two years it can increase the risk of a cancer called osteosarcoma. The name is teriperatide. A new drug has come which is also same. The name is called abol, abol paratide. So these two drugs are bone forming. So let us understand which drugs inhibit osteoclast and which drug stimulate osteoblast that is bone forming. Now first of all, this dual action is seen with a drug called strontium ranulate. So it has dual action. The one which inhibit osteoclast is number one, bisphosphonates and they end with dronate. For example, alendronate, pomidronate like that. Second, we have serm. Serm is select estrogen receptor modulator the name is called roloxifen and then we have calcitonin and then we have a monoclonal antibody called den osumab den os u map remember os for osteoporosis so it targets rank ligand the target is rank ligand this is frequently tested the one which stimulates osteoblast, just now I told you the name is called teriparatide. Teriparatide. So one update for neat PG, particularly we have a new drug called Romosozumab. It is also for osteoporosis. It inhibits sclerostin. So it has dual action. That means it can inhibit osteoclast and stimulate osteoblast. So coming back to the question, the answer is teriparatide which causes bone formation. More than two years of usage can increase the risk of osteosarcoma. So coming to the second question, which of the following antidepressant has least sexual side effect? Now remember, more we increase serotonin in the brain, more is the sexual side effect. More is the sexual side effect now fluoxetine is an SSRI imipramine is a TCA and metazepine is an atypical antidepressant and venlafaxine is an SNRI so please understand SSRI, TCAs, SNRI all the three increase the levels of serotonin and all of them can cause sexual dysfunction and the maximum is seen with SSRI because they increase serotonin much. So coming to the answer, mirtazapine will not or it will cause less sexual side effect. So why mirtazapine? Because mirtazapine is atypical, it is called as NASA. What is NASA? Noradrenergic and specific serotonergic antagonist. So it causes least sexual dysfunction. And one more drug which causes least sexual dysfunction is Bupropion, which is used also for smoking cessation this will also produce least sexual dysfunction because the mechanism is it's a noradrenaline dopamine reuptake inhibitor so please remember two drugs mirtazepine and bupropion they cause least sexual side effect so let me tell you again more the serotonin more sexual side effects so frequently tested is adverse effect of SSRI, let me tell you. 
so they can cause your favorite nausea vomiting and diarrhea now initial days when we give the drug it can lead to anxiety the anxiety is seen in initial days of starting the drug and then the drug can cause insomnia and that is why it should not be given at night third it can cause the sexual side effect so they are anorgasmia i think i have told this repeatedly for you and delayed ejaculation so this is the problem with ssri so you have to tell me in the comment section what are the drugs which are called as snri one i already told you venlafaxine tell me two more drugs one starting with m and one starting with d which are called as snri in the comment section so coming back here the answer will be option c moving to a case based question a big question don't worry a 24 year old male with a childhood history of asthma complain of cough dyspnea and wheezing after cleaning the dirt room so there is a trigger if symptom became so severe and he came to the emergency room physical examination revealed diaphoresis dyspnea tachycardia and tachypnea so it seems like acute attack of asthma now his respiratory rate is 42 which is high pulse rate is high blood pressure is okay which of the following drugs addition in this situation increases beta 2 receptor responsiveness so beta 2 receptors are already there we know that they cause bronchodilation which drug will increase their response and reduce the allergic manifestation so option 1 propranolol is a beta blocker we never give this because they worsen the asthma inhaled apatropium bromide is sama but it will not increase beta 2 responsiveness now inhaled salbutamol is saba it acts on beta 2 but it will not increase the response so the answer will be intravenous hydrocortisone so why do we give steroid in acute attack of asthma he is because the increase the beta 2 response and cause more bronchodilation and can help in emergencies so what should i know from this mcq what drugs are used for acute attack of asthma or status asthmaticus the pneumonic is so hit asthma the s stands for salbutamol which is given by nebulization o for oxygen humidified 100% oxygen h for hydrocortisone which is given by intravenous and y because it increases beta response i for ipratropium which is a sama and t for terbutalin now here terbutalin is given by subcutaneous route salbutamol is given by nebulization this is by nebulization hydrocortisone by iv route so remember a for treat acidosis to treat acidosis we use sodium bicarbonate and remember you have to start antibiotics because infections can trigger asthma that's why so this is the drugs used in attack of asthma moving on to the fourth question a patient was advised treadmill test but he had lost both his limbs he was advised a cardiac stress test as shown in image the drug used for this test is all except so in order to check whether the blood is flowing properly in the heart coronaries we do something called cardiac stress test we do a patient to run on the treadmill and check the heart rate ecg echo and everything blood flow so which drugs are not used is the question like gadinosin dopamine dobutamine adenosin so find out the better answer so the better answer will be dopamine so dopamine we are not using for cardiac stress testing now let us tell what are the drugs used for cardiac stress testing how to put cardiac stress number 1 increase the stress on heart so and then see how it reacts so the drug which stimulate beta 1 that is we use dobutamine second we can use a drug which can dilate coronary and see how is the blood flow so the fda approved drug is called reg adenosine now reg adenosine is adenosine 2a receptor 
adenosine to a receptor agonist so it is specific so lesser adverse effect is seen with reg adenosine then we can use adenosine but it is not fda approved for this and then we have dipyridamol dipyridamol also increase adenosine action so these two are not fda approved but reg adenosine is fda approved but please remember all these three can cause coronal steel phenomenon so remember mainly dobutamine and reg adenosine are used for cardiac stress testing so coming back among the option the best one to rule out is dopamine dopamine is not used coming to the last question a female patient with vulvovaginal pruritus was on anti diabetic drugs which drug can cause the above mentioned problem so the options are canagliflozin metformin linagliptin lilagotide now patient is having vulvovaginal pruritus so usually that is because of glyphosins why we'll understand coming to metformin the bigonide the most common adverse effect is the gat upset that is diarrhea second it can cause b12 deficiency and rarely it can cause lactic acidosis so recently they had asked a question if a patient is having unexplained diarrhea and on anti diabetic drug what is it metformin anything ending with gliptin they are dpp4 inhibitors not so much adverse effect they may cause mild nasopharyngitis and linagliptin it is safest in renal failure no dose reduction required in renal failure patient anything any with glutide liraglutide semaglutide they are glp1 agonist and there is one problem they can increase the risk of medullary carcinoma of thyroid but it's a rare problem second they can increase the risk of pancreatitis now you have to tell me which anti diabetic drugs are also approved for obesity so in the comment section please tell me which anti diabetic drugs are also approved to manage obesity so what should i know from this mcq what are the adverse effect of glyphosins that is sgl2 inhibitors they lose glucose so there is glycosuria because of that patients will also suffer with uti and also they can have genital mycotic infection that's why the lady in the question was having pruritus these are very common and all these three have been tested in the exam but there are rare adverse effect it can increase diabetic ketoacidosis very rarely fornier's gangrene limb amputations risk is increased and they can cause osteoporosis so these are mainly for the inact pattern of exam for neat pg this is important so with that we are done with fantastic five mcqs so please like this video share to your friends and any doubt put it in the comment section thank you all